Well, hi everyone, this is Tiffany, and I'm so excited to show you how I did this mini version, mini check, I guess you'd say, of my gingham blankets. I used three colors, three shades of the country blue from Karen Simply Soft. So this one is actually light country blue, country blue, and dark country blue. So I really suggest if you can get three shades, it works out beautifully, or do two shades and like a white, an off-white, or a gray, and I think you would have really good success. So I also chose to use an eye hook for this project, even though the um, recommended hook is an H. I tend to go up one size because I'm carrying yarn through the row, but please, like I always recommend, do a practice swatch and see what you think that your own personal tension is. Okay, so I'm going to start in a bottom corner. So I'm going to start alternating and I want to show you these two colors, the medium and the dark. And in the next two, the next two rows, you'll start alternating the light with the medium. Notice how this medium color is in every single row. So this color will always be used. And let me see if I can just find the side of a blanket. I carried it up the side, but I'll show you in the, the swatch. So anyway, let's just get started. Okay, so each little block of color is three stitches wide by two rows high. So for this sample, I'm going to multiply the number three times five, and then I'll add two for a turning chain. So we'll start with 15. Now if you wanna do 15 chains, if you want to do larger, just multiply any odd number times three and then add two. And you can make this blanket as wide as you'd like. So get 15 chains worked in the medium color. Okay, I worked 15 and then I added two more for the turning chain. So that is a total of 17 chains. Okay, so let's begin in the third chain from the hook with the herringbone half double crochet. So I insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first loop. I mean, not yarn over, just continue pulling through the first loop, then yarn over and pull through two. All right, let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull a loop back through, and then continue pulling through that first loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. All right, that's our second one made. And here's our third one. We'll pull through and then we're gonna stop right here. Now we're going to grab our dark color of yarn, the dark country blue, get the end, and simply lay that across the hook and pull through. Now, I'm going to disregard that tail. Now I'll work with the dark color across the next three chains and I'm going to work over the carried medium yarn. That's gonna come right along with me. So I insert my hook underneath the top of the chain and underneath the carried yarn, pull up a loop and pull through the first and then pull through two. And this first row is always the trickiest because you just don't have anything to hang on to. Okay, so we'll work our three. Time to change color again. Now, I'm going to make sure it doesn't matter which color, but just choose one. I'm going to make sure that this darker color is always to the back of my work. Okay, so I make it to the back before I pull through with the medium color that I need. All right. Now, 
we need to crow continue we need to bring this along with us so that will rest along the top of the row why we work three stitches one two and here's the third one and um before i pull through this medium color is going to be kept to the front of my work. And that's probably the one that most important is pulling it forward before you pull through. If you leave it back there and then pull up this, it, it actually is already twisted on itself. So leave that forward before you pull through. Give that a little bit of a tug. Let's work the next three. Just drop that off to the back. Sometimes I like to give this a little bit of a tug too before I pull up. But uh, when I've made my other gingham blankets with lot, you know, much larger blocks that um, that yarn can get a little bit looser. It seems like when I'm only doing the three stitches, so it's not that, it's not gaping so much. Okay, here we are at the last block of the row. So this is why I like using an even or an odd number. I like to begin and end each row the same color. So multiply three times any odd number. We did three times five. Now I'm going to chain two. Turn my work and I'm going to wrap the dark color just right around the back of my work because I do need to work over it. We'll work right into that first stitch and underneath the dark one. Oops. Two, and three. Stop, here's my light color. I'm still pulling it forward before I pull up with the dark. It really, really, once I discovered that, putting one forward, one to the back, it makes making these blankets a whole lot easier. Go to the back, front. So after we work these two rows, we're already going to do a color change. We'll introduce the light color. Forward. Okay, so let's just stop right here because we don't need the dark. We're going to kind of uh, leave. I'm not going to cut this dark because we're changing colors every two rows. I am just going to let, let that be. So it was a little bit of a... I had to kind of keep it out of my way between the lighter and the darker color, but it worked out. It was still okay. I just didn't want to weave in that many ends. So anyway, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm laying over my hook the light color. I'll chain two with the lighter color. Still kind of 
need to get that medium down there. Okay, leave the dark color behind. I know this is feels like a lot of ends, but it'll get better because that's why we're not okay, we're gonna that's why we're gonna carry these ends up. Okay, so that one eventually will go away and we'll have to weave that one in. But we do need the medium color. So I'm finding it there, wrapping it around the side. Yarn over, insert my hook. Okay, so here I am on the third, third one of the light blue. I'm gonna leave that to the back. Pull through with the medium. Grab my light blue. So another thing to remember is obviously the medium blue, like I said before, is goes through the entire blanket and it never stacks on top of it itself. So that's how an easy way you'll know how to alternate, alternate light and dark. So leaving the light color to the back. I'm guessing another way maybe I could explain it too is this um, skein of yarn, the medium color is on my left, over here on my left. And that's the one that's going forward. And the light color is over here to my right on the table, obviously it's a, but when I'm sitting on the couch, that's usually how it is. It's over on my right hand side. Okay, don't have to pull through on that one because we're turning the corner. I just want to work this one more row for you so that you can see how to carry the dark color up the side. All right, so I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, I have my two rows, two rows. It's time to switch back to the medium color. So I'm just going to pull through with the medium, chain two and turn. And before I start, I reach down here and I get that dark color and kind of pull it up the side, lay it flat along the side, and then I'll reach my hook under the stitch and underneath that dark color and then begin working. So if you'd like to make this sample about, um, let's see, I'm going to do about five blocks of color, so 10 rows high. Then that will give us enough and I can show you the how I did the border on this blanket. And I finally figured out a way that I think will help you get it as even as possible. So hopefully I've shown you enough. Okay, that one goes to the back of how to continue switching and practicing and then I'll hop back on and we'll show you the border. Okay, so I have my 10 rows and what I'm going to do is just um, pull through with that final uh, blue color and I will just tie this off and weave in my ends. You can just clip all these. I've got to find my scissors. Uh, there we go. So you can clip everything off and weave in the ends. And I'll do a few ends for you if you'd like to see. So get that all situated. There we go. There we go. And we'll get ready to do the dark color for the border. Okay. 
Okay, so to weave the ends in, I just usually use a tapestry needle and I thread this through and I guess I'm just starting with the first one that we did. This last stitch that we made, I just kind of lock that down and tie it down and then I weave in and out, back and forth, at least three different ways and I go in between the plies of yarn and I just really disguise it and then usually to finish it off I try to work underneath maybe three or four stitches this would be three like that and just clip the end close to the work and call it good there we go okay so that's how I weave in end and they usually stay and then we'll Cover, of course, we'll be covering this side up with a border. So this is how it looks when you carried the yarn up the side. And that's what it will look like. We'll start in this bottom right-hand corner down here. But I want to make sure that you can work across the top in the opposite direction. So find the corner spot down here and grab your dark color and one thing I realized as I was making this is that so in th um, the little squares looked square sorry just chain two they were squares three stitches two rows so here we are on the side of the blanket we want to try and keep it as even as possible so in the middle of the row right here in the middle between the two color rows I'm going to work three hat herringbone half double crochets so I went ahead and I chained two in the corner and I'm gonna actually just stick one more in the corner because we like to work three in the corner but I'm gonna have that chain two count as one and I'll come back around and I'll finish over there so right away in this in between the end of this row I'm going to work three herringbone half double crochets. Now I'm going to skip this row and come on up to this row in between the color here. Just poke my hook in there. And work those herringbone now this is completely optional you don't have to do it this way if you if you don't like how there's kind of this little hole right there I'm going to show you on the the finished blanket you know you could also work two and then one it's just really hard for me to find where to insert my hook right there so that's why I opted to just do three and I thought it looked really nice and neat um, now, of course, on the rows where we carried the yarn, you'll have just a bit of that yarn carry showing, but when I finished the blanket, I didn't notice it at all. I just appreciated the fact that it was just evenly spaced. That's what I was going for. So if you want to just do um, the other way, then work two and then one, but somehow it is three stitches per two rows. So I'm skipping over here, get those three, and we're only going to do it for just this round. We just wanted this round to be our base and make it nice and even. So I'm up here into the corner, so I kind of am working that corner stitch right there, one, two, three. That's working around the corner. And for this one on the top here, it felt too much to put three into this middle stitch. So I kind of already counted this one of the corner as the first stitch. So I just worked two. Now 
now in the middle of each color is where I work the three. So the middle stitch. So basically skip two and work in the middle. Okay, just do that all the way around and we'll join the round and turn and I'll show you what's next. Okay, I am back to my starting and I'm working that last stitch where I pulled up a loop and chain two and I'll just slip stitch to the top of that next stitch and I'm going to chain two and turn. So here's, here's what I've got so far. Just all these little things like that. And I'll show you on the big blanket how that, how that kind of turned out and looks. I know it's so hard to see with this dark colored yarn. I apologize. But I think it looked, it, it comes out okay just doing the three stitches. I felt like it looked really nice. So anyway, completely up to you. Okay, so the next round is a complete round of just double crochet. So again, at the base of that chain, go ahead and work one. This is double crochet now. Yay, you're done making the herringbone. That's it, you're done. And I worked one double crochet in the top of each stitch, and I worked three double crochet into that middle stitch for the corner. So just to help increase it around the corner. Okay, I'm back to the spot where I chain two and turn. So I'll finish with one double crochet into that spot. I'll slip stitch to that other double crochet, chain two and turn. And now we'll start with what is called the front post and back post double crochet because we're going to make ribbing. So down here around the first double crochet that you see, go ahead and pop it forward by inserting your hook down behind it and then bringing it back forward just around the post of the stitch and then work your double crochet. Now on the next one that you see, We'll insert our hook from the back, back and pop it out towards the back and work your double crochet. So one is going to be popped forward and then the next one is popped backwards. Work those across the row and I'll show you what it looks like to work the middle stitch to get around the corner. Okay, I've alternated my ribbing and now I'm. you see those middle three double crochets. I've already worked the first one and it turned out that it was popping forward. So on the next one, I'll make it pop backwards, pop to the back, back post double crochet, and then I'll work one around the same post going forward and this one will be my middle one when I come back around the next time and then I'm going to work one more going to the back so a little bit tricky but you can get it there you go and now since that last one was a back I will just continue Going forward so just continue the pattern of one front one to the back no matter which way you land when you get to the corner just make sure you work three around that middle spot okay I'll meet you back at the end of the round okay I've worked all the way around and I'm right back here and at this very last one um, just go ahead and make that your corner. So I already worked one back. I'll make this one a front and I'll make this one a back. 
you can kind of just estimate which one of these posts you want to work around to be your corner like that and then I slip stitch chain two and turn and so the first one is popping forward so I'm going to match it and the next one is that middle stitch of the corner so I'll work three around that one one alternating front back or let's see back front back and then you can just start working around here's a front one now we're now we're cruising so just make sure you are matching the direction from the row below and you'll get that nice ribbed look gonna work do the exact same thing and when you return the uh, you can choose if you want to do another row of ribbing I think I called it quits on that I think I just did the two the one row of double crochet two rows of ribbing and then I worked one final row of just single crochet into the top of each stitch and that's all I did then I you know joined tied off and had a really cute blanket so I think I'll stop there let me show you the blanket one more time if you have any questions I will have the full written pattern on our website come and join the Daisy Farm crafter group that's where a lot of people are making the projects and you guys can all kind of share notes about your experience and I can pop in there and answer questions. But it's always been, I mean, I just am so happy at how even this border turned out on the sides of this blanket. That was the key. Make sure you have the same number of stitches per two rows. So since it was three stitches, it kind of, you know, one inch little squares. You like that uh, I liked how that single crochet kind of flattened it out just gave it a really different look all right all right you have a wonderful day thank you so much for coming by our YouTube channel as always I'm so appreciative of how kind you are and we just try to do our best answering questions in the Daisy Farm crafter group it's we do receive a lot of questions across all the social media platforms and it has turned out to be the easiest place is to just join the Daisy Farm Crafter group. So anyway, hopefully that works out for you. All right, you have a good day.